Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Brogdon and welcome back to the Mobile Ads Garage, where we cover mobile ads code the way I enjoy cheeseburgers, thoroughly. In our last episode, we covered how to import the Google Mobile Ads SDK into your projects. Today, with the help of my partner, Gary the Graphics Guy, I'm going to build on that by talking about banner ads. To start, let's imagine that I'm in an application. Perfect. One of the simplest ways to monetize an app is just by adding a banner. There we go. Now there's a lot you can do with banners. You can use different sizes, you can put them in different places, and you can even animate them. But we'll keep it simple for now. Let's start with Android Studio and a simple banner across the bottom of the screen. Okay, so here's my app in Android Studio. It's just a simple hello world, and I'm gonna add a banner ad right at the bottom. And here are the steps involved. So first, I'll place an ad view in my layout, then I'll build a request object, and then I'll load an ad. Okay, so here's my layout file, and I'm gonna drop in an ad view element. There we go. And you can see Android Studio pointing out that I need a new namespace reference because of the ads attributes, and I'll accept that, no problem. There we go. Now let's talk real quick about what's in here. So I've got the ad view element right there. I've got my width and height set to wrap content, which is what you want. I've got some positioning code, and then I have two attributes that I really want to draw your attention to. Ad size right here tells the SDK what size ad you want to load. You know, banner, medium rectangle, that sort of thing. And then ad unit ID tells the SDK which ad unit corresponds to this banner placement in the app. Ad units are created at apps.admob.com, and generally you want a unique ad unit ID for each of the spots in your app where an ad view appears. That way you can control things like mediation and refresh rate and so on independently. All right, now I can go into my activity code and find a reference to that ad view object I just dropped in the layout file uh, by using find view by ID. There we go. Perfect. All right, so step one, done. Now I'll move on to building a request. So the SDK has a builder class for ad requests that makes it really easy to construct them. So I'll make a new one here and call its build method. We're gonna go into a lot more detail on ad requests and how they work in another video. But for right now, just remember that every time you load an ad, you'll need a fresh ad request object to do it. Yeah. Now, one thing I am gonna do is add a test device ID to this request by adding a function call just before build and giving it the emulator's ID. This way I can be sure I'll get test ads while I'm testing, and that's important. Always, always use test ads to test. Okay, that's all we need here to build my ad request. So what's left? Just making the actual call to load an ad. And since I have my request object, I just need to call ad views load ad method, and I'm ready to go. Excellent. All right, let's run this bad boy. And there's my test banner, excellent. So we, I placed an ad view, I built a request, and loaded an ad. Job done. Great. Now that we've got Android down, let's move on to iOS. And remember, it's like making a tart tan instead of an apple pie. Same concepts, different language. <sighs> Fine, Gary. It's like C.K. Ogden's seminal translation of Wittgenstein's Tracticus. Same concepts, different language. You don't know me. Now, on to Xcode. All right, so here we are in Xcode. I've got my simple app going, and I'd like a banner across the bottom. So how can I do that? All right, here are the steps for showing a banner in iOS. If you just got done watching the Android section, these should seem very familiar. First, I'm going to place a GAD banner view in my storyboard. Then I'm going to build a new request object, and then I'll load it in. All right, so here's my storyboard, and I'm just going to drop a generic view onto it. Let me drag that over. And then I'll use the Identity Inspector to change the class to GAD Banner View. There we go. And now I'll throw some constraints on my banner. I'd like it to be at the bottom of the screen, centered, and the size is going to be 320 by 50, which is our standard banner size. There we go, add the constraints. All right, let's see how that looks. Cool. Now I need to get it referenced in my code. I'm going to use counterparts and just drag it over to the view controller and make a property. Call it banner view. Excellent. And you can see Xcode complaining that I'm missing an import. So let me go ahead and add one in for Google Mobile Ads. Uh, the SDK is distributed as a framework to make that part easy. Now I just need to give my banner an ad unit. These are made at apps.admob.com and generally 
For every place in your app that you show an ad, you'll need a different ad unit ID. Uh, so you can control things like refresh rate and mediation independently. And last thing, I just need to give the banner a reference to the root view controller, uh, which in my sample app is this one. Okay, so GAD banner view is placed. Now I need a request object. Requests are represented by the GAD request class in iOS, which has a static request method to build them. Uh, there's a lot you can do with requests, which we're going to cover in one of our subsequent videos. For now, just remember that each time you load an ad, you'll need to build a fresh request object to do it. And I'm going to go ahead and add the simulator to the list of test devices on my request. That way I can be sure I'll get a test ad in response to it, which is important. You should always, always use test ads when you're testing. They prevent false impressions and false click-throughs, both of which are bad things. All right, so the only thing left to do now is load an ad. To do that, I just need to call the GAD banner views load request method and pass it my ad request object. Excellent, so that's the last step. Let me run the app, see what happens. And there's my test banner. All right, so here are the steps one more time. Uh, to get a banner working, you just place a GAD banner view, build a request, and then load an ad. Job done. Banner ads are a great way to get started monetizing, but there's a lot more to talk about. Where's the best place to put them? How can you avoid unintended click-throughs? We'll cover all that and more in our next episode. In the meantime, I've got some great resources to link you to, like our AdMob interstitial guides for iOS and Android, which have notes for Java, Objective-C, and Swift. We also have sample code up on GitHub for both operating systems, so check those out if you're interested. You might also like AdMob's No-Nonsense Guide to App Monetization. It's an overview of monetization strategies that includes code and tips from other engineers. As always, if you've got a technical question relating to anything you've just seen, stop by our support forum. And if you've got a question about this video series or an idea for something you'd like us to cover, leave a comment below and Gary and I will see you next time.